Welcome back. On this update, I'm going to show you how I put this together. I have a couple of drawings laid out there um, to go over, and I'm going to break down how I figured out the dimensions and how I went about just making this all happen. Okay, starting out with the sole or the floor, this is laid out on a set of stringers that I built out of two by fours. I'll show you a picture of that. And then I had bought three five by 10 sheets of uh, three quarter plywood, just not even, you know, nice stuff. This is just one side was finished, the other side wasn't finished. And uh, I ended up V groove routing all of these caulk lines into the deck after I measured it with my drawing and made sure the lines were where they needed to be. Then I went and I just uh, put a batten down and followed the batten and, and um, followed it with the router. After I did the V-groove routing, I went back and filled all the lines with actual, what is teak, teak caulk that would be used on a boat. Um, taped it off and filled in all the lines, kind of made it look a little old and sloppy on purpose so that it looks old and weathered. In the shooting of the movie, uh, in all the shots, you can't even really see these lines. The boat was so dirty and, and well used from filming that most of these disappeared during the filming. But in the po or sorry, in the pre-production photos, you could very well see these lines when they had first uh, uh, built the Orca out of Warlock. The hatches are a best guess. Uh, obviously, just counting the planks and making it line up the way it lines up with the helm over there hangs over about an inch. Uh, where the latches are, just from stills from the movie, um, have the same similar poles they have there. Clearly, the, the uh, edge banding is not what is in the movie. Um, I have not been able to find it. It's really a, a three-groove brass, almost like a um, bullnose or a, a step trim or a cabinet trim. I'm not sure, but uh, it's made out of brass, has three little distinct grooves in it. You can see it in the freeze frames from the movie. I have not been able to find that. So for now, I just laid down some copper tape in the pattern. So when I do end up eventually finding that, I can get that down as well. But that was a best guess on the planks, or sorry, not on the planks. It was a best guess on the uh, hatch sizes, how I came up with those. Naturally, before I could build any of this, I had to draw this many, many, many times. And I actually didn't know how to draw it to any kind of dimension before I got the prop. So I actually started collecting the props first, the clocks, the extinguisher, wheel, the stove, um, and that's how I was able to draw against the pictures or stills from the movie, um, using the props to measure and trying to figure out dimensions. And what I came up with was that all these planks, these are also tongue and groove planks along all the bulkheads and cabinets, uh, those I determined were about three inches. And one of the main ways I came up with that is the base of the clock is about six inches, and in the movie it takes up two planks, so I went with that and started drawing. And that turned out to be about right. So whether I'm off a quarter inch or more, uh, it's hard to say, but I think it's fairly close to the real deal as everything lines up. As I drew each side, port, forward, starboard, aft, I kept comparing the drawings and making sure where my lines would stop and where the planks would, would lines would, would line up with um, different things. I had to keep drawing it until they all lined up, all four sides. And then, of course, I did a top drawing from the top down, and I'll show you. Um, everything had to line up in the drawings before I started building, otherwise it wouldn't have made sense. So I finally drew it uh, enough times and, and was able to measure everything out and get everything to line up to where I could actually start putting this together. Starting on uh, these drawings, um, I don't know what rendition these are. I didn't keep track of how many times I drew it. It was a lot though. There was a lot of wasted paper when I figured out that I was wrong. I might have drawn the forward bulkhead first, and then I drew, you know, the starboard side, and was like, well, that doesn't line up, so that can't be it. And, or I drew the port side and the aft bulkhead, and, and the lines or, or shapes or dimensions didn't line up, so I, I had to keep drawing this until these all lined up dimensionally, and it, and it made sense. I also had to make sure that that stove had the gaps on each side. That was one of the biggest ways I found out what size these windows are was this, uh, a still of the uh, stove in the window in the movie, and there was probably four or five inches on each side of that stove uh, you could see in some of the shots. So that's kind of how I guessed on these windows. 
Um, and then I just kept drawing. I, 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 when I started getting the real props, I, I took those real dimensions and laid them out on the drawing exactly where they were in the, in the stills from the movie and start, and just kept drawing until it all lined up. And that's kind of how I got my basis to build this. Uh, the windows, of course, I, I went with 30 inches. I don't believe now that they are. I think they're actually around 32 or 31 and a half inches in reality. And I'll, I'll explain that later when I show you the port side bulkhead. And then, of course, the overhead drawing. Everything in here had to line up as well with the other drawings. And, and once I knew that everything lined up, it was time to build. After I got the sole built, it was time to start putting up bulkheads and building cabinets. I actually built the helm first. That was the first thing I built. And I, I kind of made a mistake when I built it. Um, I was using a picture from Orca 2, and I didn't know at the time all the differences between Orca 1 and Orca 2. And most people, I think, knew uh, do know the now by now that they're considerably different boats. Um, Orca 2 just being a bottomless replica to sink many times over. But in the movie, if you hold a, a freeze frame on Orca 2, there's only seven planks in the helm face, and in the real Orca, there's eight, or almost eight, actually. One of them's a little shorter than the rest, but... So when I first built this, it only had seven planks. I started putting this bulkhead together on the starboard side and, and trying to go against my drawing and said, that is not working. There was too much space over here between the hatches, and it just wasn't right, and that's when I figured out, oops, I was using the wrong boat to, to uh, get my dimensions from. So I ended up rebuilding this whole helm a second time, and uh, got it right this time. Probably the second thing I built was this cabinet, um, just because of the stove, I needed to make sure when I put this together that the stove dimensions would work and I'd have room for the two tanks and there was still a gap on the on the back side there uh, and there was room enough in the front for the cups to go. So all that had to work in real life. So I think the cabinet was the second thing I built. And now that I look at it and look at stills, I regret my choices on these planks with all this figure. Uh, I believe the real orca was built out of fur, tongue and groove. Um, the grains are really tight in the movie, and that's, I think, from the era. It's probably what they used to put it together. This, naturally, is all pine uh, for cost. Just, um, it would have been an exorbitant amount of money to build this out of tongue and groove fur at today's prices. So as I went along and kept building, I was starting to get more selective with the planks I was choosing and tried to get more tight grain um, in the instead of uh, a lot of figure in the cabinet. And I may end up rebuilding that cabinet in the future. I don't know if I will or not, but it's working for now. So the starboard side bulkhead is actually two pieces. It splits right along the, the windowsill. The cabinet's its own piece. The helm's its own piece. This bottom half of the bulkhead is its own, and then this, this chunk of windows comes out as one piece as well. That aft bulkhead right there uh, with the little round window, that comes out by itself as well. So this all comes apart and can be carried out. Same with up uh, on this forward bulkhead. This lower dash piece is its own place. The windows are their own, and the one behind the helm there is its own as well. That all comes apart. So the rest of the uh, interior comes apart the same. The port side splits in half, and the other aft bulkhead behind the bench is its own piece as well. And then, of course, the sole comes up into two giant pieces after this middle piece comes out, and that can be broken up and carried out as well. Now, as far as the stain goes that I use, this is all pine. Pretty much everything in here is pine uh, to save on, on cost, and you can tell just by the grain and the figure and this, all the planks are pine tongue and groove. And then mostly, you know, the top face of that is plywood. The windows are made out of either one by threes or one by fours or one by sixes, depending on what piece it is. A lot of this is, uh, you know, this giant piece here actually is a door frame. I needed that to be four and a half inches and a door frame is actually exactly what that is. Um, and then just one by twos framing out the window. The core of these pillars are two by fours. And of course, one giant uh, one by three or one by four on the bottom that's holding it together there. So the stain uh, is actually two stains. I don't remember exactly what the first one was, but it was a darker stain. And then I ended up going over the top of that stain with 
a uh, red maple stain actually to get that red. So the boat's fairly red in the in the film you can see, and it looks a little more golden in this video than it actually is in person. It's actually more red than this video is showing, but I thought it was decent. It came out uh, good enough for me, and uh, I tried my best to make it look weathered and old. Um, some of this st stain job might make some of you cringe because you can see my brush strokes and different things, but it was my attempt to weather it and make it look like an old boat because the actual boat was already two or three decades old by the time they started filming with it. And um, I don't know how much of that interior is original to Warlock. They might have changed everything and just made it look old, but either way, I try to replicate that. So the little louver doors, I actually ended up getting a set of closet doors. Here's the bottom half of the original door set. Uh, they were 12 inches wide, which worked good for this cabinet. I actually think on the real Orca, the doors go all the way back to the edge. At least in Orca 2, you see that. But in Orca 1, you really never get a shot of that. So I can't tell on Orca 1 if they're going all the way back or they're just a pair of doors like this. I do know this front edge is accurate. If you look in a lot of shots from Orca 1, from this point of view, you'll see that that door goes into that second plank by about an inch. And that last plank isn't quite as wide as the rest. So, uh, but I went with 12 inches. That's good enough. You never see this in the movie. So it's uh, anybody's guess how wide these doors were. But these doors up here needed to be 10 inches wide. And they also needed to be quite different. See the uh, thin frame on the insides and then a thick frame on the top and outsides. That's how they had it in the movie. So I took apart this top half um, after I cut it off of this bottom half. And uh, I cut all the louvers down, put them back together, and then I uh, changed the frames out to make them thicker so it looked more like the movie. I tried my best to replicate the knobs and the little latches and the lock uh, as best as I could tell what was in there. So I think it's all close enough. Same with the knobs on this one. Obviously, the louvers are a little tighter um, to each other on these than the actual Orca. They had a little bit bigger of a gap on the real Orca. All these little edges or keepers. I'm not sure what you call these actually. I made these by hand. They were one by threes that I uh, routed with a, um, a bull nose or a radius router, router bit and chamfered the ends and cut them on an angle and then they're just attached from the bottom. Same on the on the table as well. Um, I just made those by hand attached. It. That's just a, a sheet of three quarter inch oak plywood and uh, with an edging on it that I put on and then of course the little um, edges or keepers and uh, I did that stain differently because in the movie it is not as red as the rest of the boat so I did more of a golden stain on this I actually think the table in the real movie is 10 inch planks like three 10 inch planks make that table up because you can see seams on the plank edges in some frames so I just went with a solid sheet good enough I'm not going for a hundred percent dead accurate with anything in here. This is all as close as I was uh, comfortable going with and uh, how much effort I wanted to go into each detail. Um, so I just went with uh, as close as I could with, you know, being realistic about, you know, spending two months making a table perfect or just getting one that's good enough. Okay, the bench. How did I come up with what that is? Well, um, most seats are about 17 to 19 inches tall. I think I went with 18 on this. Um, it also worked out for the height of the cushions in the back. You know, in the boat, there's actually this gap you can see before the, below the window seal and above the cushion where Hooper would rest his arm on top of that. Um, so basically, I don't know what the real seats were. I'm guessing they were 18 inches. They could have been 17. This might be an inch too high. I don't know. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, I'm six foot two, so, uh, measuring myself against everything doesn't work because the actors were about five foot eight or five foot nine, somewhere in that range. So I'm a much bigger person than they were. So when I sit in these benches, I look, I make the set look small, but it's, it's actually accurate to what the real Orca would have been. Um, the actors are a lot shorter than I am. My wife, who's five foot seven, I had her come down and sit and saw where her shoulder rested on the windowsill. And I said, yep. I think that's the height they should be. And uh, I went with it. And I just had these uh, made by a local upholsterer and uh, tried to put the buttons where I saw them line up with the planks in the movie. Obviously, in the real Orca, this button's torn out or missing, and these cushions are just kind of all worn out. And the upholstery is a little more maroon 
Um, I think that those were probably made out of Naga hide or something. This is just marine vinyl and uh, it was good enough for me. Okay, the port side, um, obviously mirrored the starboard side, just no cabinets, just a bench here. How, I mentioned earlier that I believe I'm off. My windows are just a little too short, both width and height. How I figured that out is the, the amount of planks. If you count these up, I can't remember. It's like 26 and a half planks on this, um, on my build, but in the movie, I think they're like 27 and a half. I think I'm missing a planks worth. And the planks are three inches. Um, I don't know how I missed it during the drawing phase. I did it, I did it so many times lining up all the planks with the with the window columns and everything. I'm not sure how I missed it, but I did. So there's a there's three inches missing from this the back window up to halfway up this window. So that's at least an inch and a half, you know, or so for each window. So I went with 30 inch windows and I think they needed to be actually 31 and a half or 32 inches square. So that made this the top half just an inch and a half too short and probably the overall length of the cabin maybe three and a half, four inches overall too short. But I don't think anybody would recognize that if I didn't point it out. It is pretty accurate. Um, sitting in it is comfortable. There's every bit of room that to have all the people around the table as they did in the movie. It's as close as I think anything that exists, if anything else even exists like this in real life, other than models. Um, but I think it came out pretty good. I spent a lot of time staring at stills, as you can imagine, from the movie to figure out where everything lines up. And it's so easy to get confused between Orca 1 and Orca 2 when you start out. As time goes on, it's um, the, the two boats are almost night and day different. It's, it's incredible how many differences there are. They're so subtle, but when you're really, really digging into them, you're like, oh, that's completely different. Uh, where this where this edge of the seat is on Orca 2 is actually there's there's actually a whole nother plank in here on Orca 2 There's two planks wide between the window and the door frame and this seat frame is actually way out here Whereas Orca 1 it's it's right underneath this frame So I did my best to make sure everything I made in here was based off Orca 1 Even the little gaps and radiuses at the bottom of the frames you see a lot of this shot because when Quint's sitting here um, in several different shots these little guys in here are sliders, actually. I don't know what um, they slide for, but my guess is they were putting a camera in either side, depending on the shot they were trying to take. I don't know if they ever actually did use those shots in the movie, because I'm trying to think of a shot in my head where it would be taken there, and I can't think of one, but they slide for whatever reason, um, and that's not on Warlock. They So they did that in production when they made it into Orca. Uh, I just don't know why. So if anybody does... Feel free to share. Um, but anyway, all the all the plank spacing to the window and just how everything lines up, I, I went through painstaking efforts to make sure that I was as close, as accurate as I could be with it. Going back to the materials, again, this is all pine. This is all from, I think, honestly, 90% of this is from Lowe's locally. Uh, a couple of things I might have got from Menards. I don't remember which. I think maybe this fancy trim. I got from Menards and uh, maybe even these doors. Well, when they looked like that, those doors I got from Menards. Uh, pretty much everything else is just stuff you can find off the shelf. One by fours that just are routed. Uh, plywood underneath there, plywood shelf, plywood uh, helm face, plywood table, plywood floors, um, plywood underneath the benches. Although I do have the tongue and groove uh, planking carries through throughout the build. So an extension cord hanging out there. But actually, while we're down here, the number one flaw that everybody is probably shouting out, hey, that's not right, uh, is this table base. And yep, it is not right. Again, going back, I don't have the woodworking skills. Um, I, uh, very, very minimal woodworking skills. That table base in the movie, as you might know, is extremely fancy. There's a column on each side. There's three legs per column. There's little claw feet at the bottom. You never really see any good shot of it. So I wasn't too concerned about not having it in this build. I just went with a restaurant table base. It's sturdy. It's the right height. It works well. And I just don't think I'll ever <laughs> get into making that table base. It's just too fancy for me. Okay, talking about the windshields, that was the hardest part for me to build. Again, I'm not a woodworker. Um, I have very novice skills when it comes to woodwork and, and there's just a lot of complex angles 
here. Uh, the windows tilt back um, towards the top, and then they also tilt in from each side. And that made all these attachment points very complex. And I actually had to build these twice. Uh, this is my second set of windows. The first set I had, I had more flat and the window shapes actually turned into a rhombus shapes and nothing, it just did not look right. So I had to take those out and remake them. And what I realized while doing that is what I, a key thing I missed, and I should have known better because I work on boats for a living, is that I don't have a radius or a crown in this dash and, and it's perfectly flat. I built the deck obviously per perfectly flat as well. This is in a basement, not in a, a real boat. So, and how I messed myself up by doing that is I didn't have the, that slight crown in there to follow when making the windows. Um, and that's why I built that first set wrong. All boats have a crown in the decks and that's just for water to roll off and it's just the way they're built and for st structural integrity. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing more or less so water can roll off easier. So if you look in the movie, there's a slight crown and the easiest way to tell is over above the helm. That trim piece above the, tr the helm cabinet is barely noticeable or real thin on the starboard uh, out outboard side here and then real thick here on the inboard side of the helm. I'll show you a still of that. Um, it's obvious that that's the crown you're seeing. Um, in my opinion, I got the windows as close as I can, I think, with my skills. I still feel like the center is a little too high than what the actual orca was, but I also kind of think it's an optical illusion because I don't have that crown in the dash that would follow that and make those look less like they're pointing up in the middle. So, but I think they're good enough for me, and um, I'm happy with it. I think it'd be fair to recap any flaws I have, just in case somebody needs to be dead on accurate. Uh, I think it's just fair to point out what I did wrong or what I, at least what I know I've done wrong. There might be more that I'm not even aware of. And please point it out if you know, if you see something I've done that's like, that's not how it is in the boat. There was a lot of details that went into this and a lot of things to think about and the cutaways and the trim and the quarter rounds along the floors and just a lot of uh, things to think about. So probably some other mistakes I don't know that I've made, uh, but feel free to point those out. I don't mind that at all. I actually would help me uh, understand better how it was built and that's all good stuff. So, so my flaws for sure are, I don't have the correct table base. I know that I'm not even trying to, uh, to, to go down that road, making that. I don't have the crown and the dash that should be there. Uh, and that was mostly, I, I didn't realize I was doing it at first, but after I did it, I'm like, you know what? This is this is my office. I use this as an office. There's usually a lot more junk in here than now. I took it all out to show these updates, but uh, I usually have my computer set up and junk everywhere, and I use this as my actual office. And having those flat to put things on and actually use is more handy, I think, than ensuring I had this little radius or crown in here like the real boat. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned with that. As I mentioned before, I think overall the length... From four and a half, I'm off about three and a half, four inches total. In person, I don't think you could ever feel or notice it. Even in these stills or compared to movie shots, it's pretty pretty accurate. Other little details, um, my window corners are not quite like they were in the movie. I didn't go in depth. I'm missing the little um, window stays that go there. I'm still trying to find something that works. When they, prop, when they would flip the windows up, a little metal stay was there to hold it. Uh, I'm still looking for those. Um, this shelf isn't quite how it is in the movie. I think these are actually rounded radiuses here. And I did mine uh, more angular because that's uh, the kind of skills I have. So close enough, though. You never really get a good shot of that shelf. Um, I don't think I have too many other flaws. Uh, if I do, please point them out. Obviously, no overhead. I haven't decided if or when I'm going to build that. There's, I think, seven cross beams that hold that overhead up. Uh, I figured out all the dimensions, is at least what I think they are. Um, and so I just might, I might be able to do that in the future. I may not. Oh, another way that I know um, that I am a little too short is I don't think these dashes are deep enough uh, fore and aft. And the reason I, I know that is because that first beam goes behind this pipe in the real orca and it attaches to that corner over there but i couldn't i wouldn't be able to physically put that in behind this uh pipe here if i tried because we're already almost to the edge there so i already know i'm at least inch, inch and a half on this end 
on the dash too short because that in the movie the pipe is in front of that first beam that comes along here so that's one of the giveaways i'm a little too short for and aft i think uh port to starboard i think i'm within an inch it it's very very accurate width wise to what the actual orca was um, and just from the spacing and the clock and barometer and the plank numbers between the actual props and the wheel spacing on the helm and one thing if you didn't notice this helm is just off center. If you look at some of the photos from when the Orca was sitting at the back lot at Universal, the helm is missing, the, the, the wheel is missing, the cabinet's still there, but if you zoom in, you'll see the hole where the helm wheel was. And that hole is drilled just to starboard of the center line of this cabinet. I don't know why, but I replicated that. Um, just a little finicky detail. Other than that, I can't think of any other off the top of my head issues or discrepancies but feel free to let me know i hope you uh, enjoyed seeing how i put this together if there's something else you would like to see please let me know i'm happy to share everything that i know and uh hopes that it helps somebody else build it just a little more accurate or just build one from themselves thanks and have a great day